So yeah, we're going to try again here. So what I'm going to do this time, I'm going to make a larger quantity. I made up this mold, I guess I'll call it. Uh, it's just a piece of scrap tubing that I had, steel, and I put a little base on it so that I can pour into it without it falling over. And I can preheat that, that way when I pour it in it doesn't flash freeze, I, I'll get more of a slow cooling. Doing a big cannon with a big mass of metal, it's going to cool much slower. So I don't know if this will make any difference or not. But I'm going to make more of the gunmetal this time. I'm going to make two kilos. So when I do my math, if anyone wants to check me, I need 1,760 grams of copper, 180 grams of tin, 60 grams of zinc. To get 60 grams of zinc out of cartridge brass, I need 200 grams of brass because it's 30% zinc. So that'll be 60 grams of brass and 140 of copper. I subtract that 140 from this because I only need that total in copper. So I need to weigh out 1,620 grams of copper, 180 grams of tin, 200 grams of brass. How many people can actually say they've used tin snips to cut tin? Alright, so there I've got my tin, my brass, this is my copper. I'm going to put some drossing flux in again. All right, I just started it up. There is the temperature readout. And when it's first starting, it climbs very rapidly. As the hotter it gets, the slower that's going to go. But on the video, I think you're probably going to see it sped up. And there we have 2,000 degrees. Alright, so I'm going to start adding my other bits of copper. I'm going to preheat. Alright, here's the last bit of copper. I am going to go ahead and add the tin. Let's add some brass. I'm also going to add this uh, little bit of gunmetal I had left over from the last melt. Alright, so here's my setup. That's going to be my first pour. That's my, my preheated mold. What's left I'm going to pour in here and if there's anything left I'll pour it in the muffin tin just to make ingots. That's my phosphor copper. I just skimmed the dross but it's still in there. I've got a longer spoon. this bucket out of the way. Dumbass. Dug these out of the green sand. So here's the results. You know, it's funny, you get doing things and then you, you forget stuff. If I had weighed this uh, mold here before I poured, I could then calculate my yield. But I have no way of knowing how much gunmetal I have in this, in this one. I'm going to put it on the lathe and I'm going to try to turn it down. And maybe I'll be able to get to the point where I can peel this case off. And then at least get a, an approximate weight. Because I would like to know what my yield is here. This is a piece of cartridge brass. And I don't know if the camera is going to pick up that color difference. 
just trying different things to get you guys so that you can see the difference in that color. So I just cut that down. I'll just use a turning tool and try to try to cut the weld. Just broke through. Tappy tap tap. <laughs> well, that's one way to get it off. I guess that's a uh, like bronze scale or whatever inside there. I don't see any of the case left. I think that's a pretty reasonable approximation in weight. I weighed out two kilos of raw material, so let's see what we get in yield. Wow, two kilos, exactly. That's almost... I mean, it can it can tell that little bit of metal. Oh, you know what it is? I added that tiny little bit of the leftover gunmetal from last pour. Say probably around 60, 70 grams. So this is kind of interesting. This is the top where I poured in, so it came down there. So this is the area that was on the bottom. This was sitting on the concrete. So this would have cooled the fastest. It's very pitted right there all the way up to like the halfway mark. It's very pitted. And uh, up here it's definitely smoother. So I'm thinking that this area cooled slower, but I don't really know why it would be so pitted. The inside of that tube was not rough. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna make a test sample here, and then a test sample here, and see if there's any difference. And this big chunk I'm going to take a piece probably from the upper portion of this and we'll test that as well. All right, here we go. So this is the sample I did last time. I used a sand mold and uh, a very small pour. It didn't do so hot. This one, I also did a sand mold this time, but it was a bigger pour, so this does have the potential to do better. This was the preheated metal on the bottom, and this was the preheated metal on the top. Now my guess is that one is gonna be the strongest, if there's any difference at all. We are gonna do the green sand sample first. So this is green sand casted, gun metal, So that's 400 PSI. Boy, it broke really quickly. So I just finished watching my premiere and Brandon, thank you Brandon, pointed out that uh, it might be the way I'm making my samples, that this radius here is not adequate. And this did break at the, uh, at the edge again. So using my green sand, doing a bigger pour did not help. In fact, uh, this one was a little weaker. All right, next.
So now I've got the bottom portion of the metal mold. So when it gets there, it's that's 400. You really don't start seeing anything until 400. Got the 500 and broke. Grain structure might be a little bit finer, but I'll look at them side by side. But it, it also broke at the junction. I think Brandon's on to something. All right, well, we'll try the last one. Don't know if this is going to make any difference. In fact, I really doubt it's going to. Four hundred, six hundred, eight hundred. Ooh, we have nine thousand. I was almost at eleven hundred there. All right, so I calculated the PSI of the, the best sample there, which was the top sample from the metal mold. It was 21,500 PSI. Now the question is, why did I get 21,500 PSI on one of these? And, I mean, I didn't get hardly anything, maybe 10,000 on these uh, other two. I don't know the answer to that. And that actually makes me think, again, it's the sample. Because there shouldn't be that much variability, unless there's something wrong with my testing procedure. The grain structure there is actually a little bit finer. This is the one that was the sand. Even on camera, I think you can see that. Cooling it too quickly is an issue, obviously. And maybe this is actually stronger than I'm giving it credit for. And that would be great. Uh, boy, I sure hope that's, that's the case. But, yep, sure enough, it broke right at the corner. This one broke right at the corner. This one broke right at the corner. And the one from last video, also, right at the corner. I think Brandon may be on to something. Basically, I need to make my sample with a smoother transition and a nice radius there so that it doesn't give a stress point for it to fracture. Now, interestingly, when I've used this same method before, like this was a piece of an auto part, you can see it broke right down the middle. Uh, no issues at the corners, but that's aluminum. This is a piece of 6061, same thing, broke right in the middle. No issue. So, uh, I don't know, maybe it's the material. I'm going to need to try this again and use a better method of uh, making a sample. We're getting there. More work to do. Thanks for watching.